Hey, Joe Madosh here, not Jim Bergman, with a measure quick onboarding video to get you started. Whether you already have an account or you just downloaded the app for the first time, this is great information that will help you set up your settings and get all of your probes into the Measure Quick app. You, of course, need to know what your email is and a password. So when you first start the process, if you're working with an existing company, make sure you get the email and password from them. If you start this from scratch, you're actually creating your own company, and that gets a little complicated to get yourself connected with an existing company. So these are the different sections or cards. I'm gonna just go ahead and dismiss what's new. Those are the brand new things that have come out in the last release or important announcements. So you can see we have a map and we have a variety of different sections who help you to get moving uh, throughout Measure Quick in a variety of manners. So the map tells you where you're at and how you're gonna start your job. The task is a way that you would either start a test or go find your other tests, perform a quick test, or even open your toolbox. A dispatch tester, if you have House Call Pro or Service Titan or one of the other CRMs that we work with, it'll show up there. Test trackers, if somebody's actually sharing their measurements with you, you can see that. You can access the, your account if you have privileges to go on to Measure Quick Cloud. And you can see also there's another section with uh, Quick Tests. So as you scroll up and down here, you'll be familiar with a variety of stuff, including there's a simple ad, Measure Quick Classic, uh, our latest videos, including this one that you probably will find on there. There is a section with some tools. Those are actually how to go buy the tools, not add your tools. And there's another section about training. Uh, lots of great information that's here. And notice that we actually dismiss the um, what's new, but it shows up at the bottom. If you really want to see how to uh, customize this, and this can be company-wide, you can just hit customize your screen at the bottom, and it pops up another section. These are now all the individual sections we just saw, and all, over on the right side, with those little three bars, you can actually drag stuff up and down. So if you're using a CRM, you would want your dispatched projects to be higher, because those are going to be sent out to you as a technician. If not, then tasks would be above that. And you could rearrange all these you want. You could even hide something like Measure Quick Classic, and then when you hit complete that at the bottom, then everything comes back, and you can see how you've rearranged these. In the upper right corner is a little plus button that allows you to minimize these sections. Sometimes that may happen accidentally or on purpose if you want to make this page seem less cumbersome. You can actually hit the plus or minus button and collapse any one of those sections. I want to stress some navigation things like in the upper left corner, the little icon of the individual, that's actually your account information. So when you click on that, it actually is going to open up your account. At the top, you can see what your login is. That's the email you use to log in. Uh, if you go down towards the middle, it says App Notes. You can see the version that you're on. It may be common that we want to make sure you have the right version. You can log out if you need to log into a different account. Below is actually for more information about other tools. You can also check for updates right there in the middle. It'll tell you if you're up to date or not. So you can add your profile uh, picture right there, or if you want to add company-wide pictures, that's actually done on our cloud services. So this is a really great, important place to make sure that you have up-to-date versions and you're on the right account if you have multiple accounts. Okay, we're back on our home page or start screen. Uh, I want you to look over and navigate to the bottom right corner. That's our plus button or hot button. Uh, it allows you quick access to a variety of um, things in Measure Quick. Um, starting on the lower section to the left, that's a question mark that takes you out to our web page, which is our support page with lots of great information and uh, more uh, resources and stuff you're looking for. The gear icon is going to take you to our settings, which you're going to come back to. The icon just above that is takes you to your toolbox. That's where you add and check all your tools. And the one above that is actually takes you to the gauge screen. When we're in a project, there's a lot more things that show up in the hotkey, including how to take quick pictures or even jump to the electrical section. Just tap anywhere away from the hotkey and everything goes back to normal. I wanted to bring your attention to the very upper right corner is settings. It's also in the hotkey. So tap on the hotkey. The first one over on the left is the settings. Here's the settings. These are actually the same settings throughout the entire app and stay with you every time you actually are using the app. So on the top, it's actually units of measure. The only thing some people try and change is actually the air moisture indicators from wet bulb to RH or dew point. However you visualize your moisture, you can change that and it is app wide setting. As we scroll down, you can see display settings and at the top it says show touch indicators. That's for kind of training or demos like this, so I can turn that on and you can now see where my finger is in the app. So it's a great thing to do. Keep screen awake. We want to keep that on all the time. It, it makes it so you don't have to keep waking up the screen while you're working. Notice that I have split screen, and if you're on a phone, you may not. So we know whether you're on a phone or if you're in a tablet. So if you're in a tablet, we have a split screen so you can see the gauges 
and the workflow side by side all on a tablet. A phone does not work that way. So you do want to make sure that you have that. If we have guided workflows now that are coming out, that's why you're probably watching this. And I recommend you split this in half. It's a nice way to see both things equally in the same time. And if you want to put gauges on the right or left, depending on how you want to work, you can also change that setting. This is the hot button, which we started and got us here. So it was green. If you want to have a different color, including experimental multiverse or whatever it is, you can select that. You can see if it's on the, if you want it on the right or left, depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed. And those are all the different options that actually show up in the hotkey. There's really no reason to turn them off. If you find one of them is missing, it's probably because it got tapped off on the settings by accident. The next thing we have is actually notification settings. You only need to use these if you're doing troubleshooting with MeasureQuick on the phone. We'll tell you to turn these on. Uh, it allows a pop-up. So if you have weird pop-ups that are giving you notifications, you probably turn these on by accident. The next is the toolbox settings. Let me explain what disable auto mapping is. So when you actually add a probe to MeasureQuick, you're going to map it to its use, whether it's a temperature probe and you decide if it's going to be the uh, supply or the return or the outdoor air temperature. So when you uh, have auto mapping disabled or off, then when you turn a probe on, MeasureQuick will automatically map it to the next available section. If you turn this on, then you are now enabling or disabling auto mapping. When you turn a probe on, you would have to physically map it to whatever it is you wanted it to read. If you're new to MeasureQuick or you're adding a bunch of probes to your application, the best thing you to do is leave it in the off position and the measure cook will automatically map all of your probes as you turn them on. If you're adding just a few probes or uh, changing some of the probes you've got, then you may want to activate this and disable auto mapping. And then you would map each one of the probes to what you wanted to read. The next section is photo settings. So you can actually turn off all photos throughout MeasureQuick if you don't want to take them. Some people have third-party apps as part of their company-wide group, and they just do their own photos in a different app, so you can just turn them all off. If you're going to take photos in MeasureQuick, then you want to leave that as it is. Better quality images is for devices that don't take good images. So if you want to increase the resolution, you can turn this on. The challenge is it also increases the size of the pictures, increases the size of the reports, and how long it takes to upload them. Save images to a photo album. Okay, this is whether or not you want to save your images into your device or not. So if you say, oh, I took a picture of that air handler and you can't find it, it's because it's only in MeasureQuick. So it's really important if you're going to use your device to keep track of your pictures that you turn that on. The other one is you always want to have on auto sync photos to the cloud. This is what syncs your photos back to MeasureQuick and also syncs them back to any CRM that you may be using. The next section is advanced settings. And because you're watching this, you're probably new to Measure Quick, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on some of these advanced features, but we will go through them somewhat briefly and look for another video that actually covers advanced settings specifically. So in the beginning, we had a map on our home screen or start screen, and that actually determines how much map you see in there. So right now it's set to 0.25 miles. Normally that works fine for everybody. If you are working in a rural area, you might want to increase the radius. A trending time limit. I'm also going to jump over to quick charge defaults and uh, advanced targets. Those are all actually real advanced settings and uh, for more of an advanced user. So there's a separate video coming out uh, that explains all those specifically. So if I go back up, you can see always use sea level. That's if you're in a doing support with us and we'll ask you to turn that on because you may be at a different sea level. I'm actually in uh, Colorado and it's 5,000. Uh, elevation and Ohio is only a thousand so we would turn that on if we're going to share measurements so we're all on the same page uh, going down to no background mobile that's if your device is actually playing music and it's a Bluetooth device that can interfere with your Bluetooth settings so it's a good thing to turn that on we can't guarantee that it won't interfere the last part of advanced settings is use app beta version and if you turn that on it'll prompt you to restart this is if we want you to test anything that's new uh, that's coming out and you kind of give us some feedback. But as for now, you do not need to be in the beta version, so you can just leave it off. The next section are add-ons or things that you can add to the app as you go. One of which right now is Smart AC. We've had that out for a little while. If you'd like to learn more at it, just reach out to somebody at uh, measurequick.com or go to our support page. If you're not going to use it, just go ahead and turn it off. Other workflows you'll see here soon are 
ACA, the Air Conditioning Contractors of America workflows, as well as using our guided workflows or even soon NCI. There's a variety of things that will be added to this section that you can come in and turn on or turn off. The last section here as we scroll down is the applied demo data. So all of the fields that MeasureQuick has are actually open fields where you can enter information into them. If you have probes on, that will always overwrite any of the fields. But if you have no probes on, you actually can go through and enter anything you want in any of the fields, and it will give you diagnostics and give you very valuable information. As a great opportunity to learn MeasureQuick, you can just click on any one of these options, and it will go through the entire app and completely fill in all of the fields so you can actually go through and see how MeasureQuick works or functions. It's a great learning opportunity or training opportunity that you can actually see how MeasureQuick functions without having any probes on or have to bother with having a system live. If you want to enter everything manually throughout the app, have at it. You cannot get a score, save your data, or issue any report. To save your settings, go to the upper right corner and click on the check mark, and it'll take you back to the start screen. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a MeasureQuick user. Have a great day.